This is the Parenting IQ podcast where our mission is to equip you during your child's academic years to bring learning to the daily little moments. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly Cagle, and I want to welcome you to season four, Little Moments, Big Impacts. Hey, lifelong learners. Today, I want to talk to you guys about what your kids are telling you, whether they are telling you with their words or they're telling you with their actions. So I want to pinpoint three things that your kids are telling you today. And I want to remind you that if you want to head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe right now and get to watch the episode, there's nothing special, no guests here with me today. So it's not like you're going to get to see what Levi's wearing or what Josh, what faces he's doing or how he's sipping his coffee or whatever. But I do want to remind you that we would be so grateful um, if you subscribed to our YouTube channel. Also, our Instagram account, Dr. Kelly Cagle, that's where really I get to connect with you guys, with my audience. And not only just connect with you, but I get to hear what it is that you are experiencing in your life so I can come up with these topics. These are conversations that I hear from you about. These are conversations that when I'm out in public, when I'm teaching or I'm talking to other moms and dads that they share about their struggles. So I don't want to be the only one thinking of what I'm struggling with as a mom uh, on these topics that I come up with. So if you head over to Dr. Kelly Kago on Instagram, hit that follow button. Also, send me a DM and let me know how you are able to apply these things, these topics that I'm teaching you about, and also more importantly, what it is that you want to hear. Because again, I want to serve you and that's what this ministry is about. So this is what I'm telling you with my words. But now let's switch gears and go to kids and what kids are telling us, whether they're using their words or just their actions. The first thing that they're telling us is, I want your attention. Here are some ways that they may not be actually saying those words, mom, pay attention to me, but some behaviors that are exemplifying that they are wanting your attention. The first one is if you have a screaming child, a lot of times when kids are pitching fits, it really could just be because you have been really busy and haven't attended to their needs or gotten down on the ground to play with them. Maybe you pick them up from school and you have to start getting ready with dinner. This is a conversation I had with a mom before. She said, my kid always is so needy when I pick him up from school. And I said, you know, before you start with your duties after work, try to sit with them for a minute. They haven't seen you all day. They've been with other leaders, other adults. They've been around other kids There could be a lot more from that behavior of your child that they get home and they're just screaming. It really could just be because they miss you and they want your attention. So if you have a screaming child, try to talk to them, try to engage with them to see if that's really what they are needing. The second one that kids do when they're wanting your attention is saying the same thing over and over And over again, I have one of those, Micah, he will repeat himself until he's blue in the face. We've counted before. Sometimes he says the same thing like seven times. And really all he's, he remember, he's six years old. He just had a birthday. He's six years old. So all he's trying to do when he's repeating himself is to have someone acknowledge what he is saying. So if nobody is acknowledging his comment, his observation, his joke, then he's not going to stop and and without bringing it back up. Like he's not going to move on because he hasn't, his voice hasn't been acknowledged. So if you have a child repeating mom, 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 they're not trying to annoy you. They're trying to get your attention. They have something they want to show you. Another one that kids can do is they can actually tell you. And this just happened to us recently, actually just happened to me recently. So my oldest son is 12 years old. His name's Levi. You guys are really familiar with Levi because he was just on the podcast last week. 
You guys have heard his voice. You kind of know him pretty well, but he's older. With older kids, they are able to recognize it's no longer screaming, right? Like a toddler to get my attention. Levi can actually tell me when he's winning my attention. Here's an example. I recently was getting ready to go speak and it's first thing in the morning. I'm thinking about traffic. I'm thinking about what I need to say. I'm thinking about who I'm going to meet. And he comes in like he typically does. He wants to talk and he wants to engage. He's a quality time type of guy. So he comes in and he's telling me about his night, how his night went. It was first thing in the morning. Again, I haven't seen him all all night, like all morning yet. So he comes in and he's super excited to talk to me, but my mind was elsewhere. And actually I was looking at my phone. I was looking at my GPS, mapping out the direction of this place I needed to go to, to speak. And he recognizes that I'm disengaged. And he says, you're not even listening. And he walks out. Boom. He just told me he wanted my attention and I was not giving him my attention The point here isn't for me to tell you that your kids require all of your attention and they deserve all of your attention. But the piece that I want to pinpoint is I did not tell him when he first came in, hey, buddy, I've got a lot on my mind. I'm thinking about traffic. I'm thinking about X, Y, or Z. I simply did not make eye contact with him, did not acknowledge when he walked in. I was looking at my phone and he told me, hey, mom. You're not listening. He called me out. I it was a complete mom bus moment, but it's it's a reality that the older kids may tell you when they're wanting your attention. So again, if they want your attention, screaming kid, saying something the same thing over and over and over or actually telling you, pay attention to them. They've got something to tell you. The second thing that kids are trying to tell you with or without words is I need downtime. This typically They will not say with their words, but their actions will show quite a bit. Things like a child crying over something they usually don't cry about. So like if they're trying, if they have this toy and they love this toy and they always put it together and know how to operate it really well, but then there's one time that they're playing with this toy and they start crying about it. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. You never cry over this. That is because they are telling you they need downtime. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about overstimulation. And remember, even with toys, even with playing, your kids can become overstimulated. So if they're crying over something they typically don't cry about, whether that's school, homework, friends, toys, Uh, Even a way that you treat them, for example, if they always love to wrestle, but you are wrestling with them one time and they start crying over it, they are trying to tell you, now is not the time because I need downtime. Another way that they're telling you they need downtime is when they get really aggressive. So this happens quite often in our house because, you know, we have three boys and Josh loves to wrestle. He grew up in a household with two brothers as well. So it's three boys, how he grew up. We have three boys, so they wrestle all the time. Typically, the boys all want to wrestle with him. They Dad walks in and it's just like WWE happening at my house. It's just a war zone. And I've come to understand that that is how Josh connects with them and shows them love. So I need to just like, hey, now it's dad's in, in the house. Let it be all the, the roaring, basically, that I try to keep down all day is let loose when dad walks in. But if during that wrestle time or during when they're playing football or they're playing basketball and one of them gets overly aggressive with the voice or even like starts swinging arms, that's because they need a break. They need downtime. It is no longer a good opportunity, a good time, a good choice for you to keep pushing the buttons and keep wrestling. It's no longer time for you to keep the game going just to finish the game. It's time for you to say, you know what, guys? The game's over. Now let's let's call it off because one child is getting aggressive. That child is needing some downtime. I was listening to an audio book the other day and there was a story being shared 
And, and it was about, especially with Easter coming up, it was about every, family gatherings. And when the house, the family, everybody comes over, if you're the host home. And for example, in Josh's side of the family, which is where we have Easter, gosh, there are probably 30 people that go over to a family member's house. I mean, we take over her house. I'm so grateful that she's willing to open open her home. And I'm sure it's the same case for you guys whenever you have family gatherings. But it's always loud. It's always chaotic. There's always a lot of food, a lot of laughter, a lot of memories being shared, memories being created, lots of pictures, everybody dressed up, right? There is a lot happening. And in this story, in this audiobook that I'm listening to, it was the host home had this little girl, this nine-year-old. And every time that there was a lot of people over at the house, she would react and she would get, you know, would act in ways that she typically doesn't. She would get aggressive. She would talk back. And it was just confusing for her mom because she's such a sweet child. So she, the mom began recognizing what the child was telling her without the child telling her. She was just telling her what she needed with her behaviors. She was acting out because she needed a break from all of the noise, all of the stimulation that was taking place. So whenever it was that, the mom would make sure that the rest of the weekend was just a chill weekend, that it wouldn't be a really busy with a lot of people and a lot of noise activities for the rest of the weekend. Or if the family was actually staying over at the house, she would take a break, a one hour break and take the daughter to the park on a walk with their dog, giving them a break. This, they need downtime. Downtime is not just nap time. Downtime can be silence. It can just be, hey, I need a break from you talking to me right now. So what your child is telling you if if they are acting out in ways that whether they're crying, whether they're being aggressive, and also if they're struggling to abide by a typical routine, things like bedtime is always so simple, but they're starting not to want to do the typical bedtime. They're struggling to go to bed. Double check your daytime schedule. Because it could be that they have had so much happening during the day, so much stimulation happening during the day without enough downtime that they're unable to unwind at during the time that they are typically ready to unwind. So bedtime. So just double check your schedule. See what your child is telling you in regards to downtime. It could be that if you have a really busy day, like you went to the zoo and there was a lot of activity the next day, just plan for a chill evening at the house. The last thing that your child is telling you with or without words is I feel safe with you. This one is probably one of my favorite ones because every morning when the kids wake up, I make it a point to welcome them in my arms. And I just told you a little moment ago about what happened recently with Levi and he told me that you're not paying attention is because this is what we always do every morning. I greet them each morning and I kiss them and I hug them and I ask them how they slept because I want to start start their day already in safety. I want them to know that their emotions, that whether they slept, because they tell me if they didn't sleep while they tell me. And then we try to figure out, wow, so today we are going to be a little more tired or maybe be a little more grumpy. We unpack because there's safety in their feelings, there's safety in my arms. And I want them to always remember that there's safety here in our home. And one of the ways they show you is for those younger kids, Micah is six and he's still, he's still a little guy. He's, you know, he was in the 20th percentile when he was born, but he runs into my arms whether we are at the park or wherever we are, I just open my arms and he comes as fast as he can and just swings his arms around my neck. And I just wrap him up and I pick him up and I give him a million kisses. Why? Because 
He's not going to be acting that way forever, but he will always be safe with my, in my arms, in my embrace. And so I don't, right now it's a physical thing. He's my physical touch guy. So I want him to physically feel the safety that he can find in my arms. So if your kid's doing that to you, there's safety there. If your child starts the conversation with, don't tell anyone, but that means they feel safe with you. This isn't about being secretive. For example, don't tell dad, but some of the things, obviously it's important that you say, no, we, we need to make sure that dad hears this stuff, it's this, this stuff too, it's important. So it's not about being secretive of one parent hearing more than the other. But if you spend more time with your child, for example, in our household, I work from home and my kids are home with me. So I get to hear a whole lot more of their life day to day, moment to moment, things like, oh, mom, guess what I just read? Guess what I just found? Guess what I just learned? When dad comes home, when Josh comes home, it's more of the core things that happen in their day that they're sharing with dad. But if your child is starting a conversation with you and you pick them up from school with, don't tell Sally's mom, but then it's because they have safety with you. They feel safe with you. So they're telling you without telling you when they start a conversation with those words. And then the last one that I want to pinpoint about safety is if they're crying with you. Listen, so often, and I'm included in this, so often when our kids come crying, we're like, oh my gosh, stop crying already. Why are you crying? But if your kid is coming to you with tears is because they feel safe. Here's a story that recently happened. Titus, he's eight. He, I'm working and he finds me in the house and he comes and he's just crying and telling me all these things. These I can barely understand them because he's just crying. And I just opened my arms. I put him in my lap and I let him cry. I let him say, I didn't necessarily validate his feelings. Like I didn't tell him you're right for crying. I didn't say any of that. I just let him vent because there are some kids that all they want is for you to listen and you being their safety net, all they want you for is maybe for you to just hold them while they cry about something. They may not even want you to solve their problems. In that moment, Titus wasn't looking for me to solve his problems. He just had an outburst of emotions and he feels safe with mom. So he came to digest them with me. I didn't solve his problem. I didn't tell him what he needed to think, what he needed to do. I just held him in silence. Y'all, he sat in my lap for five minutes in silence. And then he just, (gasps) after he was in crying, he got down from my lap. And he walked away and he was smiling the rest of the day. So in that safety of your arms, this is typically important for dads to hear because dads always want to solve their problem solvers. Your child isn't always coming to you for you to solve their problems. A lot of times they just want to talk. So if they start with, don't tell her, but just listen let them talk because they're telling you and crying with you and sharing their emotions with you because they feel safe in your arms. So those are the three things your kids are telling you, whether they're using their words or not using their words, that they want your attention, that they need downtime and you can help facilitate that downtime for them and that they feel safe in your arms. So I found learners, I really hope They feel more empowered to recognize your child's behaviors and how they could be tied to what they're trying to tell you with or without words. We will see you guys next week.